Yeah, can you turn your mobiles off? It's really embarrassing when they <laughs> <laughs> go off during the run. Very unprofessional. <laughs> this won't go off. Oh, God. Can oh. I help? I do a similar thing for my mother sometimes. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Dan Stevens. In the news this week, at a meeting of the world's top economists, the conclusion is that the only way out of the global financial crisis is to make the younger generation pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> at the White House, life comes full circle as a male intern sends a photo via his mobile. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and on the set of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, one jungle dweller sees the size of Anton Deck's paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> With Ian is a performer who in 2003 was nominated for Best Newcomer at the Edinburgh Fringe, alongside some bloke called Michael McIntyre. Yeah. But where's McIntyre tonight, though, eh? <laughs> What's that? Oh, he's at the Liverpool Arena playing to 11,000 people as part of a sellout national tour. Anyway, please welcome Miles Jupp. <laughs> With Paul is a stand up comedian who was once described by The Times as hobbit like. I'm hoping that's because she's short and lovable and not because she's got massive hairy feet. <laughs> please welcome Susan Kalman. And we start with the bigger stories of the week. Paul and Susan, take a look at this. Oh, yes, OK, this is obviously the News International story, the phone hacking, the Hugh Grant, there's the editor of the News of the World doing some uh, research. <laughs> that's, that's my twin sister. Yeah. There. <laughs> that's me. Uh, <laughs> clearly. That's somebody from 1892. And Steve Coogan, who was recently giving evidence as well. So this is the uh, Levinson inquiry. Lord Levinson is looking into this. So, yes, yeah, so there were some pretty grim stories about non-celebrities and some other stories as well. So it, 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 the, 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 the stuff keeps cascading out. Yeah, it was celebrities first, um, then the really grim stories, um, and then um, Lord Levinson will come to the defence of the press, which obviously is not a great week to, to even try and mount one. Um, but um, eventually I hope he gets around to the point that we've only got an inquiry because a journalist actually discovered this story. No MPs, um, not a policeman, um, not a judge. It was a journalist who uncovered it. So I'm hoping we won't throw out the entire um, baby with the bathwater. Um, what do you the think end the solution this? could be? Because obviously, you know, if you, as soon as you start regulating the press, then you have difficulties, as you say, you would never have found out perhaps about the MPs and allowances and stuff like that. There are endless solutions to this. The basic one is that we have laws and nobody obeyed them. Um, <laughs> and at the end of however many years it is, Lord Levinson will probably say, I think journalists should probably obey the laws. I mean, all these activities are illegal. Yes. And it would help if the police enforced them. Um, <laughs> and probably would help if they weren't working for the news of the world. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, there is a problem there. If, if, if the politicians' leaders are saying, you know, it's really important to us to suck up to Rupert Murdoch because otherwise his papers won't say vote Conservative or vote Blair or vote Brown, then you don't have a great incentive. Do you think I should go and just give my evidence to <laughs> 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 yeah. I gather Lord Levinson's going to call the most important witnesses next, who are members of the public. Um, a number of them apparently bought the news of the world <laughs> at some stage in the last 20 years. <laughs> and I hope he's going to ask them why. <laughs> well, I'm 
me, when you, when you look at sort of the, you know, the history of public hanging, it only stopped because it was so immensely popular they couldn't handle the crowds anymore, not because <laughs> there was revulsion <laughs> amongst the public. We don't want to see people being hung. I remember being in a very rough pub in Streatham about 25 years ago and a fight broke out between two guys and it was exciting, you know, one was hitting the other guy. But I didn't demand a fight every time I went into the pub. Mm. <laughs> Just because it was exciting that time. But that analogy would be that you go to the pub and it says, fight tonight inside 25p, and then you'd go every Sunday. But they, 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 they wouldn't do that in a pub because you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> you're not? No, you're not allowed to advertise fights in pubs. To be fair, if you go to Glasgow, they do advertise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy hour there, isn't it? <laughs> just before the bingo, we'll just have a wee bit of a cage fight and then everyone, everyone has a baby sham and settles down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's lovely, actually. Yeah. You should come up sometime, they'd love you. <laughs> I went to Govan once. Did you? I was trying to make a documentary. I got out of the car into the street and a bloke came straight up to me and said, You're out of your depth here, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Hugh Grant was indeed uh, appearing this week. He was slightly surprised by the strength of the questioning from the council to the inquiry. Does anybody know what... Hugh uh, had to say to him. It was something along the lines of you. You spoke to me earlier and promised me a few straight deliveries, but you're delivering nothing but googlies. It's pretty much right. He said you said you were going to bowl me straight balls. If these are straight balls, I'd hate to see you <laughs> googlies. <laughs> because that would be an invasion of privacy on a pretty, <laughs> pretty massive scale. Does anybody know what else we learnt from Hugh this week? Uh, his middle name is Mungo. Um, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Well, I mean, the world learnt that. I already knew it. I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the hair? Is it the hair that does it for you? Uh, it's, it's everything. It's just, I, I just really enjoy the work of uh, our premier light comic actor. Mm. <laughs> This is, this in a way, this is about the global recession. You're seeing a lot of movies, more and more movie stars are doing television uh, at the moment, and this is, this is his way of doing it, I suppose. <laughs> Do you think a lot of agents are ringing up Lord Levinson saying, can you get my boy on? <laughs> um, as a huge fan of you, you may know uh, that the mother of his baby, Ting Lang Hong, received a threatening message from a reporter after Hugh Grant's appearance on Question Time. Do you know what they said to him? Um, if he doesn't be quiet, we're going to uh, fund a sequel to Have You Heard About the Morgans? <laughs> <laughs> you really are fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they said, tell Hugh Grant to shut the fuck up. That's exactly what they said. <laughs> tell Hugh Grant to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Gosh, standards have slipped at the Telegraph, haven't they? <laughs> um, whose good name has Hugh Grant dragged into this inquiry? He made the scurrilous assertion that the Daily Mail might have in some way been involved in phone hacking, which they refute entirely, I understand. The Daily Mail utterly refute this. The Daily Mail does not want to be associated in any way with phone hacking. The last thing <laughs> the Daily Mail wants is for its name to appear in the same headline as a phone hacking scandal. <laughs> okay, okay. Watch, watch out next that week. That Dirty Dan's good, Downton good. scandal. <laughs> While the uh, inquiry into the press intrusion has been going on, what have certain idiots on Twitter been doing? Using it. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a particular person who attracted their attention, though. Yeah, the woman on the left. Indeed, the woman yeah. on the left. Karine Patrie Hoskins, she's the junior counsel to the inquiry. She was apparently listening intently to Hugh Grant as he testified. Now, why on earth would a lawyer want to do that in court? <laughs> but you used to be a lawyer, didn't you? You, you were. No, a that's a misnomer. <laughs> <laughs> I tried a couple of court cases, but they found out after a while. I'm oh, sorry, you're talking no. about it. Do you know, it's, it's actually, it was slightly distressing because the woman on the left, she actually went to Glasgow University as I did. I, it made me feel quite unwell that the person who stayed in the law had a greater televisual presence than I did. <laughs> also this week we heard from Steve Coogan. Did anybody hear any of the methods the News of the World used to get stories on him? They interviewed him, I gather. It's pretty underhand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it all seemed quite above board. Showbiz reporter and casual friend of Coogan's, Raj Singh, rang him up to tell him that the News of the World had a kiss-and-tell oh, yeah. story on him, but if he confirmed some of the less salacious details, the paper would keep the more lurid details out of the paper. So then what happened? They didn't. Yeah. They put them all in. According to Coogan, my manager received a call from the editor, Andy Coulson, saying that the whole phone conversation had been recorded and they were going to print it anyway. Thank God Andy Coulson never went on to hold a position of trust. <laughs> <laughs> How did Coogan describe the behaviour of News of the World? Disappointing. 
Excellent. <laughs> he described it as a dispassionate sociopathic act by people acting in an amoral universe. Aha! <laughs> Coogan claimed he had never entered a Faustian pact with the tabloids. What did he mean by that? A pact with the devil. He meant just because he's a public figure doesn't mean he has no private life. Yes, indeed. Most tabloid reporters thought Faustian pact was Man City's new striker. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody read anything about other cast members in the phone hacking scandal this week? Rebecca Wade, uh, the former editor of the News of the World and The Sun, is having a baby. Um, but uh, it's through a surrogate, and she's asked for privacy. <laughs> She's correct. She's expecting a baby via a surrogate mother, or, as the son might have put it, disgraced ginger dragon to have Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not the only country, of course, trying to impose higher standards in public life. What are they trying to do in Pakistan? going to censor the use of, of certain words in text messages. That's absolutely right. There is a committee that's, that's drawn up a list of over a thousand offensive and sexual words to be banned. Uh, does anybody know any of them? And there's a bonus point if you know the original Urdu. <laughs> <laughs> Just one bonus point for that? That's <laughs> extremely... We don't know. The traditional the top, message. Well, top, uh, I, can, I can give you some of them. Yeah. Strap on. <laughs> beat your meat. <laughs> love pistol. Pocket tool and flogging the dolphin. <laughs> flogging the dolphin? <laughs> Never heard of that. Uh, this is the inquiry <laughs> into newspaper standards. The Levinson inquiry heard evidence that on a number of occasions, News of the World journalists went through Steve Coogan's bins. In fact, they still do, but nowadays they're scavenging for food. <laughs> At the inquiry, Cheryl Gascoigne revealed that the press had made inaccurate claims about the size of her divorce settlement, saying the coverage was hurtful, inaccurate and untrue. Coincidentally, also the motto of the News of the World. <laughs> uh, Ian Miles, take a look at this. Uh, that's Ed Balls, wiping away a tear. That's Eric Knowles and I can't remember the woman's name. <laughs> That's the health secretary. That's the health secretary. Uh, Is he on Antiques Roadshow now? That's right. Uh, a Northern Rock customer. Uh, no, there we are. That's... Uh, uh, Gaddafi. That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> the big one is Ed Balls. He's got a human side. Yes. And he weeps. When he watches Ed Miliband in the House of Commons, he just cries. <laughs> He weeps uh, when he's watching Antiques Roadshow. Of course. <laughs> when I read about it, it said that the bit he found really extraordinary was when someone comes in and they found an heirloom that's worth a huge amount of money. Mm. And then he remembered he was meant to be a member of the Labour Party. <laughs> um, and he said, but they think, oh, it's worth more to me than all that money, so I won't sell it. <laughs> and that's what makes him cry. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he, also, he also weeps at the sound of music. <laughs> That but again, is it was interesting... The film, or just any music? <laughs> <laughs> that would be an incredible handicap, wouldn't it? He weeps at the bit where the Baroness is brought back um, to the house by um, the Admiral, whatever he is, yes. and the children perform the song. Yes. Why is that emotional? It's incredibly moving. <laughs> maybe it's something in, I don't know, maybe it's something in his childhood or something, maybe it's a repressed well, memory. Well, something in his youth or childhood. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he spent his gap year, didn't he, nannying in, um, uh, Nazi-occupied Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Apparently, Nick Griffin uh, also cries when he watches The Sound of Music, but that's only because the Nazis lose at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, we also found out that Ed's favourite song to sing at karaoke parties is... It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. Mm. <laughs> it's close. Was it Russ Abbott's Atmosphere? <laughs> <laughs> it was Endless Love, where I take the part of Diana Ross. <laughs> The other news in that montage. Branson's taken over a failing bank. And Northern Rock was bankrupt, and now Branson has taken it over. Except not all of it. He's taken over the bit that's called a good bank, and he's bought that, but £21 billion of debt remains with the taxpayer. So, a good bargain for us. <laughs> and he got it 400 million quid cheaper than we paid even for the good bit. So, you know, he's laughing all, all the way to 
to his bank. Uh... <laughs> yes, according to the Times, the government is accepting in part payment an IOU of 150 million. Since when did the government start accepting IOUs? I, I might try it myself. I've had a, <laughs> quite a decent year, but you know how it is. Um... <laughs> Is Branson taking over the whole of Northern Rock? You sort of answered this already. But... <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, I don't do you... think he is. I reckon actually we're going to end up still owning £21 billion pounds worth of debt. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely bloody livid about it, Dan. Try getting me off this topic. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, before we go any further, shall we cheer ourselves up with a picture of Theresa May from The Telegraph on Wednesday? Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Anyone who can pull a face like that can't be all bad. Health Secretary Andrew Lansley has been popping up everywhere this week. What's he been up to? There's a scheme of putting screens by hospital beds and you're ill, you're not happy, and his face comes up on the screen. And I think he says, your custom is very important to us. <laughs> um, I'm sorry about the delay in your operation or treatment. And then he plays Vivaldi. <laughs> At table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, he's, he's done a video to be shown on screens above the beds in hospitals. Uh, the problem is, it's on a three minute loop and it's driving people bonkers. Um, <laughs> you can turn him off. Oh. Does anybody know? If you pee, oh. that's the thing. If you don't, what? you have to pee. <laughs> It's the hospital entertainment system. You have to pay something like five pounds to get access to reruns of Casualty, which is all they show. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you don't pay the five pounds, then you just get Andrew Lansley on a loop saying, hello, thanks for coming. That's absolutely right. The Independent pointed out, in some wards with multiple beds, the screens have the effect of a television showroom with dozens of Lansleys <laughs> staring down on the ear. <laughs> as if they haven't suffered enough. <laughs> and they went on. One man who visited an elderly relative said it was eerie. Everywhere you looked, there was Andrew Lansley. My mother-in-law had to keep topping up the machine just to escape him. Uh, does anybody know what the message to patients actually says? Hurry up and died is a cue. <laughs> I am from another planet. <laughs> I have access to your life support machine. <laughs> Have you got hypnotic eyes? Is yes. Staring into the eyes? There's really not very much wrong with you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you could leave now. Just get off the bed, jump out of the window. <laughs> what scheme has Eric Pickles announced this week? Eat the unemployed. <laughs> uh, bring a quiche mm -hmm. to work, Dave. <laughs> yeah. He's got the smallest features on the human face since time began. <laughs> um... Eric Pickles has announced a scheme to set up a curry college to teach British chefs how to cook curry. It's an ambitious scheme, but the government's confident they can deliver, if you're within a three-mile radius. <laughs> And uh, turning to the House of Lords, yes. uh, House how of Lords. did finally? Yeah, great, get stuck in. Yeah. <laughs> House uh, of Lords, yeah. How did the noble lady Baroness Trumpington distinguish herself in the chamber recently? <laughs> Not in there, no, she flicked a V sign. She's 80 something, isn't she? Yes. Uh, Lord King made a reference to her age during a speech, and she responded by doing this. <laughs> I think he said she's 84 and she said no, two. <laughs> <laughs> At the college, chefs will learn all the necessary skills, from combining the perfect mix of spices to create a mouth-watering bolty, to chucking some unnecessary salad into a warm plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> this was the government selling of Northern Rock to Virgin Money. After selling Northern Rock at a loss of £400 million, George Osborne described it as the best possible deal, which raises two questions. What would constitute a worse deal? And, George, can I interest you in some magic beans? <laughs> <laughs> NHS patients have been complaining that hospital TVs are running a patronising message from Health Minister Andrew Lansley on a continuous loop. This has already led to some terrible mistakes, with patients crying out, I can't take it anymore, just switch the machine off. <laughs> And so to round two, the cloche of news. 
Carson the butler will lift the cloche, revealing an item or items relating to a news story of the week. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Was this the film of the gentleman chasing his dog, Benton? Uh, a dog who was chasing deer, mm. and he was just screaming, Benton, Benton. And he's not come forward, but some youth, as they always do, was mm. filming it on his mobile telephone device. And it's got over a million hits on YouTube or something like that. He's absolutely the right answer. This is Benton the dog. the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look at internet sensation? Benton? If we don't, I'll fight anybody who says we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Following this, Benton went viral, and both he and Why? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why did people think that was entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> totally out of focus, camera shot, two loads of some deer in the background, some bloke shouting Benton, and millions of people have watched it. I'm in the wrong business. Do we know what the latest controversy about Benton is? He's a glove puppet. <laughs> His real name's Fenton. He's absolutely right. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yes, How do you uh, know this? <laughs> I don't know this because it appears in newspapers. <laughs> Does anybody know what the Sun's headline for the Benton story was? Humanity <laughs> reaches Nadia. the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> we are all doomed. <laughs> the last person to leave the planet, tell Fenton. <laughs> <laughs> Human beings duped into watching crap on New Invention. <laughs> it was Calm Down Deer. Oh. The Sun this ended its report. Worse, isn't it? <laughs> is there no piece of redeeming <laughs> quality in this story anywhere? No. Well, the Sun ended its report saying, Do you know Benton and his owner? Drop us an email. Yeah. And the good news is, they've tracked down Benton and his owner, and the dog has been destroyed. <laughs> I'm, I'm only joking, animal lovers. <laughs> That was the best um, bit! <laughs> <laughs> it's gone viral, but also people yeah. are now selling T-shirts with the picture of... Are people buying Benton. them? I don't... I've only bought three. But... <laughs> <laughs> so somebody was filming thinking, I can't believe the stuff I'm getting here, this is magical! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why watch David Attenborough when you've got that? Fenton <laughs> is here in Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, over there. The mobile phone man is there, mm. and the internet is everywhere. <laughs> uh, Pete Wedderburn, the vet, yeah. helpfully explained that the video highlights the single most important command that dog owners need to teach their pets to come back <laughs> when called. <laughs> Thanks very much, Pete. In other animal news, you'll be <laughs> pleased to hear. <laughs> uh, Pigeon takes off from roof. <laughs> With no apparent motive. <laughs> this is all that's going to be left of the press after this inquiry. Is animal that... story. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone tell me what Gavin, the world's most sarcastic gorilla, has been up to this week? <laughs> Did he shove a banana up Barry Watson? <laughs> Did he win a contest? I mean... Who judged him the most sarcastic <laughs> career? Were <laughs> well, there hundreds of them turning up going, yeah? <laughs> Gavin lives in Jerusalem Zoo. According to the Metro, Gavin gets pretty peeved when visitors applaud him for his dances. So peeved, in fact, that when they start clapping, he stops dancing, gives them a sarky grin, and mimics them precisely. <laughs> Of course, it's not all violence and sarcasm in the animal world. Who's been showing a more artistic side this week? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, a spaniel's opened a watercolour exhibition. Yes, exactly. <laughs> a dachshund has perfected an impression of Charles Dance. How do you do? Any dinner. 
Uh, no, this artistic animal is Gary the Gerbil Ballerina. Uh, oh, don't, don't say <laughs> we're going to be looking at a picture of a gerbil <laughs> wearing a tutu. <laughs> we are. Let's see Gary in action. <laughs> He's not dancing. He's just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the clip does get a bit distressing after that, though. We can't show you the end of it, but it goes, Benton, Benton, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Benton. <laughs> this is Benton the dog who became an internet hit after chasing deer in Richmond Park. The next time Benton's owner visited the park, he took no chances. He left the dog at home and went on his bike. Now, if... that was worth seeing. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Oh. This is the cheapest sandwich you can possibly make, which is just bread with toast in the middle of it. That's the right answer. Well this is the news that the toast sandwich has been declared the most economical meal possible in these austere times. How much does the toast sandwich cost to assemble? It's eight pence. It's about eight pence or something like that. It may be by now. Uh, I have 7.5 pence. <laughs> well, uh, let's look up the rain stuff there. You need, presumably. You don't need anything. You need a toaster. How, who can get a you toaster for <laughs> seven and a half pence? <laughs> how, would you, how would you go about making a toast sandwich, Mark? A toast sandwich? Uh, well, I would uh, bake some bread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I would uh, slice it. And then I would... Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bread sandwich, isn't it? Mm. So there's, there, there's no toast involved. it would be three slices of bread in a pile. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even turn the julep on. Uh, who exactly has been pushing this culinary delight? Bakers. <laughs> Sir Compton Mackenzie, <laughs> author of Whiskey Galore. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no according, not him. According to the mail, the recipe has been unveiled by the Royal Society of Chemistry. <laughs> How confident is the Royal Society that they've found the most economical lunch? Extremely confident. They're, they're boasting about it. We have found the most economical lunch, they say. Yes, so much so that they're offering £200 to the first person who can come up with a cheaper but still edible alternative. What we used to eat at school was a sugar sandwich. It's private to use. Uh, <laughs> <expensive. laughs> to be fair, the sugar did come from your own plantation. <laughs> this is true. An open, an open butter sandwich. That's just one, one. An, no, no toast. It's just we've already uh, toasting is too expensive. Yeah, and then yeah. It's, it's it's one behind. piece of bread just with butter on it. It's an open bread, bread sandwich. Or maybe leave out the butter. Maybe leave out the bread. It's bread. Bread, it's bread. <laughs> bread could be uh, flour. Yeah. Yes, uh, a spoonful of flour and put it in your mouth and then just take yeah. some water out of the tap. Well, rain water is cheaper. <laughs> Well, The Guardian couldn't beat them on price, but they did suggest a far superior culinary experience of one untoasted slice between two toasted slices. <laughs> the devils. The where did the society... Uh, where the did Brevels. the society... The Brevels. Brevels. Yes. Nice. yes. Very good. <laughs> you to see that? I don't know. Product placement or something. Is it? I don't know. I don't, yeah. There are the toasty makers available. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a julep one. It's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's twice you've got them in. <laughs> <laughs> they, they make very good stuff. <laughs> uh, where did the Royal Society get this recipe from? Oh, no, it must have been from an old austerity book. Uh, how we ate in the 1850s. Well, it was from none other than the woman who gave us the collared pig's face, Mrs Beaton. Oh. In her recipe book, she described the toast sandwich as very tempting to the appetite of an invalid. <laughs> Toast fans will be pleased to hear Mrs. Beaton had more in her toast range. She also came up with toast and water. <laughs> yes, it's a slice of stale loaf toasted, then soaked in a quart of boiling water until cold. Although Mrs. Beaton did take pains to point out, if drunk in a tepid or lukewarm state, it is an exceedingly disagreeable <laughs> uh, In other health-related news, what has the NHS introduced this week to help battle the obesity epidemic? It's uh, a tray that tells you when you've had enough to eat. A talking plate? Yes. It is. A talking plate costs £1,500. It's known as the mandometer. Anybody know how it works? It tells you when you've eaten too much, when you're eating too quickly. Slow down. Do not eat so fast. 
<laughs> put down the potato. You must not eat any more. Oh, yes, more actually. cabbage. Chew your food. <laughs> Don't eat plate. <laughs> Stuff like that. More or less, yes, it's, it's very simple. Have you seen the internet today? <laughs> <laughs> Amateur video cam footage on. <laughs> End of message. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite simple. The, the plate weighs the food and monitors the rate at which it disappears. A screen shows graphics of the food disappearing at a healthy speed and compares it with the fatso's actual rate. <laughs> what if you took the potato off and put it back again? Would it assume you were being sick? Are you bellemic? <laughs> This is the austerity sandwich. <laughs> Consisting of just three slices of bread, the toast sandwich costs seven and a half P. Or if you can't be bothered to make it yourself, Pret a Manger do a great one for three ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> it's time now for the odd one out round. Ted Heath, Harry Belafonte, Larry the Downing Street Cat, and this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just that's, the team that, that, that's the clip that wins us the BAFTA. <laughs> no, <I> think... <laughs> no, no, no. Larry the Cat, he's been thrown out of Downing Street for joining the BNP. <laughs> I think I've had a tweet from the Downing Street cat, which again will just pile upon the fact that people now think I'm an incredibly sad cat lady, and I am, because I get tweets from other cats. Yeah, I dress my cats up in more than that bow tie, by the way. You've got to make an effort. How do you dress the cats up? Well, um, <laughs> it depends on we have a themed days. Oh, yes. Yes, and so if you cut the fingers off gloves, it makes leg warmers mm -hmm. for cats for mm -hmm. fame day. Mm -hmm. And then. <laughs> You've got to be careful if you make any trousers for cats. Mm. They don't have hips, so you've got to wear... You've got to make braces. Mm. <laughs> so they just slide off. Yeah. And there's nothing worse than a wee cat whose trousers have fallen off. Well, I wouldn't say nothing worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's up there, so... It's, it's, is, it, it, is it mice? It's something to do with sleep. Cos Larry the cat is meant to be in Downing Street to, to get mice. Uh, but uh, he's asleep all the time. <laughs> when Edward Heath was awake, was he always catching mice? I think I'd better yeah, tell yeah. you, they've all fallen asleep when they shouldn't, apart from Weightless, which will almost certainly put you to sleep. Weightless by Manchester group Marconi Union has recently beaten the likes of Coldplay and Enya to the title of World's Most Relaxing Song. Okay, it's insufferably dull. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, Ted Heath dozed off whilst talking to the Queen at his 80th birthday bash, thrown by John and Norma Major. How did the Queen take this slight to her conversation skills? She drew a cock on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, John Major said, I remember saying to Her Majesty, Ted's fallen asleep, and she said, I know, but don't worry. <laughs> uh, Harry Belafonte recently appeared on an American chat show to discuss his new book. Unfortunately, when they cut to the satellite feed to start the interview, Mr Belafonte appeared to be sleeping. Still, <laughs> far worse things can happen when you interview a veteran singer. The next day's guest was Cliff Richard, who stayed wide awake and spoke at length on a range of subjects. <laughs> <laughs> Larry the Cat has been falling asleep during the day at Downton Street when he should be catching rats. Uh, uh, Downton Street! <laughs> There's a serious category confusion yeah. there. <laughs> I know it's important, Dan, but not... Street. It's not actually the centre of governance. <laughs> you, you accidentally said Jewelit Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I beg, your pardon, beg your pardon. Larry has been falling asleep during the day at Downing Street, oh. when he should be catching rats, because he's been staying up all night with his new girlfriend, Maisie. Larry's now so lax at his job, David Cameron was forced to take matters into his own hands this week. What did he do? He caught a rat, did he? <laughs> Pick it up with his bare hands mm. and... <laughs> well, like Putin. That's how it works in Russia. Yeah. Big pictures of Putin killing deer. Over here, Cameron. Ooh, it's a mouse. <laughs> Putin! Putin! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Putin! <laughs>
according to The Telegraph, yeah. uh, during a dinner with cabinet ministers last week, the prime minister threw a silver fork at a mouse seen scurrying across the floor. He missed, obviously. He threw the fork and he said, it wasn't a target, it was an aspiration. <laughs> Uh, according to the Mail on Sunday, he actually said, Get out, you little fucker. I'm fucking sick of these fucking pests. They're fucking everywhere. And that's what the Queen said to Edward Hill. <laughs> According to The Sun, Larry, the Downing Street cat, is too tired to catch mice after spending most of his time with another cat called Maisie, whose owner insists they are just good friends. <laughs> Although Maisie does have an official-looking business card with advisor to Larry printed on it. <laughs> time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, The Chap, a journal for the modern gentleman. <laughs> and we start with Camilla's What Just Won't Come Off. One woman musical version of Titus Andronicus. <laughs> <laughs> Scarf and hot pants combo. <laughs> Geordie accent. <laughs> Chest twig. <laughs> it is tattoo. Just won't come off. Oh, yeah, she had a henna tattoo. Indeed, the Duchess of Cornwall had a temporary henna tattoo that she can't scrub off. According to the Daily Mail, one suggested remedy is to rub it with toothpaste as if Charles's footman doesn't have enough to do. <laughs> Next, what and what are just two qualities a chap should possess? Bomb-making equipment and a healthy disregard for the law. <laughs> An even-tempered approach to life and a winning eye for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> One is a Julian Scar obtained in Heidelberg, and the other is the talent to step into a play when an actor pulls out at the last minute <laughs> and steal the show. Ah, yes. They still talk in Croydon of that night Sir Anthony Hopkins lost his voice and I gave them my widow twanky. <laughs> Next. Staggeringly uncouth bride, what? Says, yes, I f***ing do. <laughs> Character work, Mr Hislop. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving Watch the... out, Dan. The He's next series of Downton. <laughs> is staggeringly uncouth bride graces pages of country life this is heidi withers who was described by her future mother-in-law as staggeringly uncouth in an email that went viral and has got her own back by appearing in country life's famous girls with pearls section following in the footsteps of zara phillips whose husband appeared in the boys with dwarves section <laughs> next keith vaz is what keith vaz is jazz is what the album secretly welsh <laughs> Openly Welsh. <laughs> Keith Vaz is, in fact, a knob. <laughs> Actually, that's not really a headline. It's just a picture of some graffiti on a van that somebody kindly sent in today. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> so if I send in pictures of me and the cats next week, is yeah. that going to... that'll make it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that'll oh, get man. in. <gasps> we could do a Downton Abbey special. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes! Absolutely. I don't know if I can make a wee wheelchair, but I'll try my best. We <laughs> <laughs> shoot lots of yeah. wheels. Yeah. Halfway through, the cat springs out a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a tingling in my whiskers. <laughs> Next, I've had what up my nose for 12 years? The London Philharmonic Orchestra. <laughs> a tiny cravat. <laughs> It's not at all close. A big cravat. <laughs> <laughs> it is, in fact, the tip of a pool cue. Oh. This is Chantal Fail, who had an accident with a pool cue back in 1999. After the incident, she went to casualty, but doctors just gave her two free shots. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Jack Nicholson came out of the toilet and said... What? I wouldn't go in there for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what people usually say when they come out of the toilet now is those Dyson air blades really are much better than the yeah. traditional hand <laughs> <laughs> I think they're very unsettling, uh, the, the air blade, actually. I oh, do. But it's fantastic, the yeah, noise yeah, when yeah. you put them in and then a wow. No, it sort of makes... <laughs> your sort of back of your hand looks sort of all screw to me. I find it... Very... <laughs> they're using the wrong kind of soap. <laughs> came out of the toilet and said, it's all yours, David. This is David Beckham, who bumped oh, into yeah. the star in a toilet in L.A. 
To Beckham's further surprise, Jack then went over to the condom machine and announced, Here's Johnny. <laughs> Next. When Alf Garold unfurls his cheek hedgehogs, they what? It's there seven foot long. It's very close. And then you go like that and you go, bah! Oh. <laughs> Closest they are, a glorious 37 inches wide. Mm. This is from a celebration of facial hair in the Chap magazine. Here is Alf Garold and his oh. cheek hedgehogs. Oh, Anybody else think he might smoke to the right? <laughs> 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 and finally, Gardner's what looks like Adolf Hitler? Question time. <laughs> <laughs> Wife. <laughs> it is, in fact, Gardner's cherry tomato. And here is said tomato. Well, the gardener could make some Hitler tomato ketchup and market it alongside Eva Brown sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so, the final scores are Ian and Miles have two, but Paul and Susan are this week's winners with five. <laughs> Before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Snowman melts and reveals hidden identity. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Sarge, we just thought this would be quicker than turning the place upside down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Miles Jupp, Paul Merton and Susan Kalman. And I leave you with news that, at a sports meeting in Crystal Palace, organisers admit it was a mistake to hold the women's 800 metres at the same time as the shooting. After his eye operation is a complete success, the paparazzi catch Pudsy Bear celebrating with his nurse. <laughs> and in Windsor, the Queen steadfastly refuses to fall a second time for Prince Philip's pull-my-finger routine. <laughs> Good night. Stay with us on BBC One for the highlights of the final Formula One Grand Prix of the season, all the action from Brazil, next.